first we confess that it is a holy action ordained of god in the which the lord jesus by earthly and visible things set before us lifts us up unto heavenly and invisible things and that when he had prepared his spiritual banquet he witnessed that he himself was the lively bread wherewith our souls are fed unto everlasting life and therefore in setting forth bread and wine to eat and drink he confirms and seals up to us his promise and communion that is that we shall be partakers with him in his kingdom and he represents unto us and makes plain to our senses his heavenly gifts and also gives unto us himself to be received with faith and not with mouth nor yet by transfusion of substance but so through the virtue of the holy ghost that we being fed with his flesh and refreshed with his blood may be renewed both unto true godliness and to immortality and also that herewith the lord jesus gathered us unto one visible body so that we are members one of another and make altogether one body whereof jesus christ is the only head and finally that by the same sacrament the lord calls us to the remembrance of his death and passion to stir up our hearts to praise his most holy name furthermore we acknowledge that this sacrament ought to be come unto reverently considering there is exhibited and given a testimony of the wonderful society and knitting together of the lord jesus and of the receivers and also that there is included and contained in this sacrament that he will preserve his church for herein we are commanded to show the lord's death until he come also we believe that it is a confession wherein we show what kind of doctrine we profess and what congregation we join ourselves unto and likewise that it is a bond of mutual love amongst us and finally we believe that all the comers unto this holy supper must bring with them their conversion unto the lord by unfeigned repentance in faith and in this sacrament receive the seals and confirmation of their faith and yet must in no wise think that for this work's sake their sins are forgiven and as concerning these words hoc est corpus meum this is my body on which the papists depend so much saying that we must needs believe that the bread and wine are transubstantiated unto christ's body and blood we declare that it is no article of our faith which can save us nor unto which we are bound upon pain of eternal damnation for if we should believe that christ's real natural body both flesh and blood were naturally in the bread and wine that should not save us seeing many believe that and yet receive it to their damnation for it is not his presence in the bread that can save us but his presence in our hearts through faith in his blood which hath washed out our sins and pacified his father's wrath towards us and again if we do not believe his bodily presence in the bread and wine that shall not damn us but the absence out of our hearts through unbelief now if they would here object that though it be truth that the absence out of the bread could not damn us yet are we bound to believe it because of god's word saying this is my body which whoso believeth not as much as in him lieth maketh god a liar and therefore an obstinate mind not to believe his word may be our damnation to this we answer that we believe god's word and confess that it is true but not so to be understood as the papists grossly affirm for in the sacrament we receive jesus christ spiritually as did the fathers of the old testament according to st paul's saying and if men would well weigh how that christ ordaining his holy sacrament of his body and blood spake these words sacramentally doubtless they would never so grossly and foolishly understand them contrary to all the scriptures and to the exposition of augustine jerome fulgentius virgilius origen and many other godly writers if you enjoyed this recording please support our channel by subscribing liking and sharing our content we would also be happy to receive any comments or feedback below.